We're getting dangerously close to the dynasty playoffs. And for some of us, that's great news. For others of us, well, we have nothing to do with that because we're in rebuild mode. We are already moving on to the 2025 class, and that's what we're going to discuss right now. Our Dynasty Nerd staff just recently did a mock draft where they picked players in a 1QB setting for this 2025 class. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to dig into the players that our staff selected and talk about who's too high, who's too low, who's just right, what names are on the rise, all of that good stuff for the 2025 class. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into it with the number one pick, the 101 selection, Michael Warno. He took Ashton Genty. This is no surprise. Any mock you see right now, I don't care if it's 1QB, if it's Superflex, if Ashton Genty is not the 101, they are I don't maybe doing it for clicks. Maybe they are trying to do hot takes. I don't know. But it would be the shock of the century to not have Ashton Genty go 1-1 in your drafts right now. It, maybe draft capital will change that. Maybe for some reason he falls or whatever. It's in the realm of possibility, but he looks like such a good back, such an elite back. I expect him to go top 15 in this year's class, which is going to make him mighty, mighty appealing for fantasy football. At the 102, Bobby Bishop, he took Tet McMillan, another one that is not a surprise here. This guy is 6'5", 212 pounds. He's had a very good season uh, out of Arizona. He is basically a lock to be a top 10 pick in this year's draft. And, you know, a lot of times when guys are this big, you're like, oh, maybe he's going to convert to tight end. No, this guy is smooth. This guy is agile, and he is every bit worth a top 10 selection in the NFL. At 103, Tristan Cook, he took Travis Hunter. This is going to be one of the more interesting names in your draft right now because you could make arguments for him being maybe even the top overall receiver in this class for fantasy football purposes if that's what his focus is in the NFL. We don't know. Is he going to focus on receiver? Is he going to focus on corner? Is he going to play both? And I'm starting to kind of be on team both. I think he's going to play both positions at the next level, 6'1", 185, and I, honestly, when looking at him, yes, there's still some things he needs to clean up. Yes, there's still some stuff that isn't perfect. But when you look at raw ability as a wide receiver, body control is bonkers. His hands are really, really good. And he's able to high point and do contested catch situations very, very well. So it would not be a surprise if he's a great receiver. It's more up to whether or not he chooses or the team chooses to use him as a receiver in the NFL. At 104, we have Luther Burden. Uh, drop, uh, drop the Mike FF, Mike Hicks. He picked him here at 104 out of Missouri, 5'11", 208. He, the, the, the comp you're going to hear, and it's, it's overdone, but this one is actually fairly accurate. He really is a lot like a Debo. He's, guy, he's a guy, I mean, at 5'11", 208, he's built more like a running back than he is at wide receiver but he plays really well at the position. Unfortunately for him, this hasn't been the best season for him compared to what we saw out of him earlier in his career, but he's still a very, very good player with high-end production, a very real possibility. So, so far through the first four picks, there hasn't been a lot to complain about in this draft. Right now, it seems like 105 is kind of the pivot point in this draft where we can see things really going a lot of different directions. So at 1-5, Mike Joran, he ended up taking Emeka Abuka, 6'1", 206, wide receiver out of Ohio State. Now, Emeka Abuka is having an interesting year. He's playing very well, but you would have kind of expected him, after losing Marvin Harrison, to be the alpha, the top dog. Well, Jeremiah Smith, the crazy talented freshman's here, so he's still kind of taking that wide receiver two role in this offense, but... The former number one overall wide receiver recruit is an absolute talent. He's built very well. He does a lot of the little things right. And I think he's a pretty safe bet to be a first rounder. If not, he's going to be in the early part of the second round. 
really, really talented receiver. Could see him producing early, early on in his NFL career, assuming he goes to a solid team. 106, we're going back to Ohio State with Doc Mitchell. He's taking Quinn Sean Judkin, six foot, 219. This is currently the RB2 in the class, according to this mock. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Quinshawn Junkins has been really, really good this year. Yes, he's sharing time with Travion Henderson. So neither one of them is going to have the eye popping numbers that some of the other players in this class will have. But don't let that distract from the point that this is a very talented player. He could be a potentially a three down back at the next level. Not an amazing receiving prospect, but he can get the job done in the receiving game as well. And he's such a physical toll. Uh, he's got good burst. Like, there's just a lot to like in Quinshaw Judkins' game. So I think this is a good pick here at 106. 107, Michael Warno, he's back on the clock. He takes Isaiah Bond. Isaiah Bond's a tricky one for me, trying to figure out how I feel about this kid because, honestly, it was hilarious that he decided to go to Texas after playing at Alabama because he's almost an identical clone to, well, the guy they had last year and Xavier Worthy. Crazy, crazy, crazy fast. A little bit more of a leaner wide receiver. It makes big plays. Like, there's just a lot in his game that is pretty similar. So, it's an interesting spot uh, for him to end up being at. I think he's a good player. I think he's a talented player. I think he runs routes pretty well for uh, more of a true speed guy. So, he could be a huge play waiting to happen. But I do think he's going to be a little bit more dependent on team than maybe some of the wide receivers before him. At 108, I love this pick. He's probably my running back two in the class right now. He goes RB3 here to Bobby Bishop, and that's Omarion Hampton, running back North Carolina, six foot 220, just a physical, bruising back. He has had some incredible, incredible seasons at North Carolina, where we've seen him go for over 1,500 total yards in eight games so far this year. He's over 1,000 yards again. So he's a very pro-ready back. He's taken on the workload. He's been producing since he was a freshman, and this guy is the real deal. I know that he will be very coveted by NFL teams. I expect him to be probably a round two pick in the NFL draft. Another guy that I could see going round two, hopefully not round three. I'm pretty confident he'll be a round two guy, and that's Travion Henderson. Tristan Cook took him here with the 109 pick, listed at 510, 208. He's probably going to be one of the lighter backs among the main guys. I'm guessing he actually weighs in closer between 200 and 205 when it's all said and done, but still, in today's day and age, that's plenty heavy enough. We've seen a lot of players, namely guys like Jameer Gibbs, guys like Devon Achan, produce at a smaller size, and part of that is due to their receiving ability, and that that's something Travion Henderson has. Yes, he's got the home run speed, but he is a great receiver out of the backfield, similar to what we saw out of another guy that was a little bit undersized, but a great pass catcher in this Ohio State offense in Mr. J.K. Dobbins. So really, really like Trey Henderson. He is a home run waiting to happen. Mike Hicks takes the first tight end off the board here at pick 110, and it's not hard to love Colston Loveland. 6'5", 245, and on For a team that just can't really throw the ball this year, he's still putting up really solid numbers. He's still making great catches, getting open, despite really the defense not having to worry about a lot of the other pass-catching options. So love what I've seen out of Colston Loveland. He's a guy that can easily be split out, used as more of that true pass-catching, wide receiver, stand-up wide type of player. So think great things are ahead from Colston Loveland. A lock for the first round of the NFL draft wouldn't shock him to wouldn't shock me to see him go back to his old coach, and there in LA team up with Jim Harbaugh, team up with the LA Chargers. Mike Jordan's back on the clock here, and at pick one eleven he goes with Nick Singleton, six foot two twenty seven running back out of Penn State. He was another guy. Very, very highly regarded prospect in his class. The number one running back coming out of high school. He's he's had an okay season, 
not an amazing season, uh, but he's been solid for this uh, Nittany Lions team. Not as much wear and tear as maybe some other running backs because he's been sharing time uh, this season quite a bit and, and over the past couple seasons as well. The thing that maybe is missing for him a little bit is can he be a guy that can take over for a backfield? Because typically if teams are going to draft somebody on day two, they're going to say, can he be the clear-cut leader for our team? That's what I'm not so sure about. Can he be that guy? Does he have enough explosiveness? We're going to kind of have to wait and see. He's an exciting name, an exciting prospect, just not sold on him quite yet. I pick 12, Doc Mitchell's going back to the Penn State well, and he's getting Tyler Warren, 6'6", 257, mountain of a man, but he moves really, really well for a tight end. I like Ty Warren quite a bit. There's many that believe that Ty Warren could end up not just being an early day two guy, but could maybe even sneak into round one, saying that he'll maybe rival his Big Ten tight end opponent and Colston Loveland. So it'll be a really interesting battle between these two guys to see who the top tight end is. But you've got the size and you've got the athletic ability there with Tyler Warren. So there's a lot to like on his side. All right, we've just finished the first round. So quick recap on the first round. At 1-1, we had Ashton Genty. 1-2, we had Tet McMillan. Pick 1-3, we had Travis Hunter. At pick 1-4, we had Luther Burden. 1-5, Emeka Ibuka. At 1-6, Quinshad Judkins. At 1-7, Isaiah Bond. At 1-8, Omarion Hampton. At 109, we had Travion Henderson. Pick 110, Colston Loveland. 111, Nick Singleton. And 112, Tyler Warren. At the first pick of the second round in this one QB mock draft, we have Cam Ward. Cam Ward is seemingly heading towards a top five selection in the NFL draft. Now, sometimes Quarterbacks do a good job of elevating their teams, and sometimes they're just kind of a victim of what's around them. We're going to have to wait and see what kind of quarterback Cam Ward is, but I've really liked what I've seen out of him during his time here in Miami and even to some extent at Washington State as well. He's got solid size at six foot two, 223 pounds, and a really, really good arm. He's a better athlete than maybe his numbers would suggest, and I could see him running a little bit more at the next level level as well so cam ward first quarterback off the board to michael warno at 2-1 at 2-2 caleb johnson caleb johnson six foot 225 running back out of iowa just a big physical downhill runner man this guy can break tackles like it's his job well i guess as a running back it kind of is his job but either way guy is a great great tackle breaker has some of the best numbers in the class and already has 20 rushing touchdowns this season so he is putting up some huge numbers and i think nfl teams are going to notice another guy that's a lock to be a day two selection at two three devin neal uh this Ken kansas jayhawk just came off a huge upset of the colorado buffs this past week 5 11 215 surprise Tristan Cook took him uh even though he loves his Colorado team uh this this guy Devin Neal he's the real deal he's a very very solid running back now is this guy the home run threat that some of the other players are maybe not but great job with that kind of in a phone booth can make guys miss in a phone booth can do a lot between the tackles and he's more of the a uh, bowling ball type, more of the uh, Doug Martin type of running back where, yeah, he's not going to break off the 70, 80 yard runs, but just a really tough guy to tackle and can get those solid yards. Mike Hicks does go with the aforementioned Colorado buff in Shador Sanders. So Shador, another guy that we expect to be a top five player at the position. And so we have two quarterbacks going off the board in our one QB mock. Usually the second round is where you start to see the top guys in the class go, and Shador Sanders is no exception to that rule. Now, I think he's going to be top five in the class, 
And I, I don't know if it's going to be Cam Ward or Shador that goes off the board first, but I think these are the only two guys that we're going to see in the top five, maybe in, even inside the top 10 or the first round. I think they're the only two that have really separated themselves. And so if you needed a quarterback and one QB, I think this is the spot where you're going to have to take one. Mike Jornt, once again on the board, Trey Harris at 205, six foot three. 210 pounds. I've had people telling me that this is one of the most slept on prospects in the class. He's got the size. He's got the production at Ole Miss. And look, this is a, this wide receiver class. There's got, there's some exciting guys at the top, but this guy is one of the names that should also be considered up there. Yes. I like him quite a bit. I think he's going to be that deep threat that a lot of teams are looking for. A guy that can go up, catch the ball, and put up some huge numbers. So really like the selection here. I think he's got one of the higher ceilings of the players that are going to be taken here in the second round. At pick 18 overall, 206, Dylan Sampson, a name that if you're just going around in mock draft circles, you're not going to have heard of him as much, but... If you were watching college football much this year, man, he has put up some numbers, over 20 touchdowns already this season. He has been an absolute force for these te Tennessee Volunteers. A little bit undersized, listed at 5'11", 201. It wouldn't surprise me if he's more like 5'9", 190. But either way, he's playing more physical than his size would suggest. Very good pass catcher. I do worry that he might be more of that change of pace, third down pass catching type of back, more so than a lead back in the NFL. But still, in today's day and age, we've seen plenty of guys that profile that way and still put up monster numbers. At 207, Michael Warno goes to the top team currently in the country, the Oregon Ducks, and takes Tez Johnson, wide receiver, He's 5'10", 160, so he is a little bit undersized, but does nothing but make plays. Very, very fast, quick twitch, but he's also a very smart player, does a good job at getting open. I like his route running. So overall, we're looking at a pretty talented wide receiver. He is somebody that it took him a little bit longer to get things going maybe than some other wide receivers, but still a player that we've seen him go up against high competition and still perform very well, thinking specifically of that Ohio State game. So I like this kid. Just don't know if he's going to quite be to the level of some of the other receivers that we've taken. At 2-8, we've got Ali Gordon, 6'2", 225. This guy is a monster of a man, but there's probably not a player in this draft that has lost more draft stock than Ali Gordon originally considered the top running back in the class won the Doak Walker award last year, but has really, really plummeted this season. Still, he's got the size to get it done. I just don't know if he has that elite vision and some of that quicker twitch ability that some of these other running backs have. He's got a really high ceiling, but he also has a really low floor. So I'm curious to see what happens with Gordon. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually goes to college for one more season. Tristan Cook decides to take another Oregon Duck receiver, and that's Evan Stewart, six foot 175. Another player for this team that's obviously producing really, really well this season. And after his time at AM, he was a little bit of a disappointment, but he was a really highly regarded recruit. He's starting to finally show that promise that a lot of people had for him. So I think this is a great time in the second half of a second round. I really want to start looking at those high ceiling players. And I think that's what we have here in Evan Stewart. Three of the last four picks have been Oregon ducks at pick two ten. Mike Hicks goes with running back Jordan James, five ten, two ten. Now, he didn't get a ton of playing time last year because Bucky Irving was there, but what we've seen from him this season, he is putting up some legitimate, legitimate numbers. There's, there's three down upside with this player. He's listed at 210. I doubt he actually weighs that much. I think he's probably closer to that 200 pound mark, but still I've talked about it before in this draft already. 
There's players in this draft, even with being a little bit undersized with how the NFL works today, he could be just fine. So I like this pick. I like taking these running backs here that have some upside, probably a day three player, but definitely some upside. Mike Jorant takes Kyron Lacey here at pick 211, six foot two, 213 pounds. So he's got the build. He's got the size, but his stock has been dipping a little bit lately. He is an older wide receiver, but there's a lot to like in his game. Specifically, he's a pretty NFL ready player. So you might not be getting the ceiling and the upside that you're needing to get out of other players. But overall, he's a pretty good receiver overall. Good hands, can do some contested catch stuff. So I like Kyron Lacey here. I think it's a worthwhile pick here at 211. Last pick in the draft here, we have Ty Felton. Right now, one of the top receivers in the Big Ten. He's got some good size to him at 6'2", 180 pounds. So Doc Mitchell took him here with the last pick of the draft. Yes, he's not somebody that is necessarily going to be talked about as highly as some of the other guys in the class, but he is slowly, slowly, slowly climbing up boards, getting more notoriety. He's got the size at 6'2", so it's somebody that I would be interested to see how high he ends up climbing. I don't think he climbs into the first round, but day two seems like a real possibility for Felton. 